to Chef B.J. Dennis. More than a friend, a son to Miss Emily. It was often said that stopping at any mom and pop store or a sidewalk pop up might give Miss Emily food that she didn't necessarily have to pay for. I'm talking about shrimp, crab, tomatoes from locals. Folks very often dropped off bags of food, baskets right outside her door. She was royalty on Edisto. Do you agree? Totally. <laughs> I mean, that's, 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 that's beyond I mean, anybody's thoughts. You, the first time I met her, I was probably like, I can't remember how long ago been, about eight years, eight years ago I met Emily. Um, and you know what your elders in our community, they gotta read you first. Just knock on. I mean, she's very welcoming, but she, you know, she had to check out who these young fellas that <laughs> in her house, so far, chef. And the relationship, our relationship was short. I came in her life, you know, seven, eight years ago. Um, now, it seemed like a long time, but it's a real short time. But it felt like an eternity. Because she was like almost like another grandmother to me. Um, I mean, she saw my son before some of my other, some of my immediate aunts and cousins saw my son. I mean, she was like that for me. So, um, this is hard to really describe because there was such a spiritual connection with us. Um, memories that I walk around my house or be doing stuff in my day to day and I can hear her talk to me. Or I'll put something on the stove and she say something to me. I can hear her, her voice. So it's, um, she was royalty. She was, she embodied what a lot of women in our culture of the Sea Islands embody. You know, she was a representative for Edisto. You know, she was a representative of, she was that light that we see through many of our folks on these sea islands and our culture. Um, but there's only one in we make it. There's only one in we make it. When you were in her company, just listening to her, were you <coughs> taking mental notes of how to not only be a chef, but also how to be a parent? So I went from, when she first met me, I was one of her boyfriends. <laughs> <laughs> So when she first met me, she didn't meet my, um, at the time, that was my girlfriend, who was not my wife, uh, so she didn't meet her yet. And she met her, and she fell in love with her, and then she would tell me, you better treat her right. You know, she would just drop jewels on me on how to make sure you, you know, maintain a marriage, you know, happiness, you know, how you make sure that you do right by your partner. I think our relationship and our conversations it spans so much, and so, sometimes so much information that inside you that you forget it, but you don't forget it. Mm -hmm. That makes sense because it's there. But when it needs to come out, it comes out at the right time. And that's what Emily would have did for me. Like our conversations, I mean, it, sh it ran from her grandmother, her 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 history to the woman who had taught her how to cook. To old dishes, to old vegetables that she don't remember seeing anymore. Her grandma used to grow. To my life. I mean, Emily was. Cause I live. I now live down um, outside of Beaufort County in Port Royal. Um, and I was, I, I'm always home in Charleston. I would come down on these stretches, and I probably get to Jacksonboro and I'm like, oh, I need somebody to talk to. I call Emily. Next thing I realized, oh, my parents' house sitting in the yard pretty much, she's going to home. <laughs> That's just the relationship we had. Um, it's, um, it's surreal that, you know, she's no longer here. I mean, I've been able, I was able to see her. I remember holding her hand in the bed when she was laying in the bed. And I could, she, she, she could hear my voice and um, told her I love her. And I said, the world got to know this MP. She, she squeezed my hand, you know, i never forget that. Because um, i never forget her. I mean, she, there's not a lot of people in your life, and I do a lot of travel up and down the Velocity Quarter, 
I said, well, a lot of elders, they really mean a lot. They, you know, they are, Emily and Minnie my girl are the last of a generation. And like they were saying, oh, she got a full genetic memory. I mean, she's talking about going in a rice pond on Saturday, her grandmother's rice pond on Saturday, to pick rice pond, rice, fresh rice for Sunday dinner. You know, old folks, things that, you know, for me as a chef and the work that I do resonates to me because it helps me out with my trajectory and what I do and the work that I, I stand for. Chef BJ, I recall seeing you at it's Emily's 90th birthday party with your wife and the new baby. And I remember at one point you were holding her hand, and you know what I remember about that? Her nails. Remember she had the 90 on her nails. <laughs> Tell me about being at that 90th birthday party and how it really was a community celebration of a life well lived. You know, that day, I got there a little late. You know, we got a, we got a uh, I guess our son was a little one, one and a half. So, you know, you, you, who ever had kids? Y'all not sure, you know, you say you can get somewhere at a certain time, that don't happen. So, we got there a little late. But just seeing her, if I want to be real with the audience, that was that moment I said, okay, I feel like they start to call her the room. That was that time when I saw her, I was like, I don't know when, I don't want to put my nobody, so I just said it to myself. I was looking at her, and I could feel that vibe, it was like, okay, the job, that one last great thing you wanted to get done was this book. And it's done. And I was like, I don't want this to happen, but this is how it's supposed to happen. I just saw, I was like, I don't know when, but I felt like, okay, it's time to go home. And that's what I saw when I was there. I was like, she's ready, it's time. And that's, that's for me. That was that moment, so I went home and I told my wife, I said, it's almost time, I don't know when, I'm gonna keep it to myself, I just felt that vibe. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, she, she got what she wanted to get done. Mm -hmm. And we people can't say that in life. Yeah, right, 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 right. So yeah, so that was the 90th for me. That was, was a celebration. It was a celebration, you know, it was that time, I, I, I knew. I knew. I said, you know what? I don't know when, but it's soon. So, but it was a celebration. Sometimes you celebrate, even though you know. Like I just felt that vibe. But I mean, look at what what was in we did these last two years before she passed. I mean, it's it's a, it's, it's a. I just want to tell her that. I'm going to make sure you, you write. I was telling her that. You will be, look, this book won't come out. You will make sure this book come out. And she already did the heavy work on that book. She already did the heavy work. I just needed, I just needed a little push. I think people should also be aware of your generosity for the family. I know a lot of people shaking their heads saying, yeah, this story could have turned out differently. When you were presented with the idea of moving forward with a cookbook, you steered the attention to her to ensure that her cookbook would come out. Yeah, so I met the publisher, jo um, uh, Abrams, Jonas, Jonah, probably two years before um, he came with another group of folks. I did a catering for some folks, and he was there. I don't really remember who he was, but I saw him at, um, actually, I think at Emmy's house. But I got an email, so technically I already, so I, I got an email from him uh, about, he was curious about a book. And truthfully, I already, I already signed a cookbook deal, but, and I'll probably miss some points, bits and pieces, but at that time, I was coming around and Elliot, who's not here today, and his mother, they were, they, they've been working on the book. So the book, so he told me that he's going to book out, I said, okay, and I said, oh, this book look good. And I was thinking the book was gonna come out just locally. Because a lot of times, and I wasn't thinking about it at that moment, but a book like that, a national publisher is not gonna pick up a book that's usually done. 
The girl book was pretty much done, I think. So I got this email from randomly around the same time about the cookbook. And I got the email, I could put up the paper, I, could, I still got it in my phone. And I just told him, I said, hey, I signed already with a publisher, but I know somebody whose story is way more important than mine. Mm -hmm. Who voices way more her history and her story is way more important. I'm from this new generation. I'm talking about a woman who can tie back to the days of enslavement, to the modern days. I said, her book is almost pretty much done, but if you just give her an opportunity to hear it out, let me connect you with the family, and pretty much that's how it happened. Um, you know, a lot of times in life when you've been blessed, and I've been very blessed with what I've been doing, you know, I've been at it for like 11 years now, with this portion, you know, fellow culture, tupu, and history, and I've been very lucky in this kind of generation of have a quote unquote platform, but they say, the accolades, but what is that about my share of those who have been doing this work, who have been here before me, who are the ones who set the groundwork for me to do what I'm doing? And they were doing that because it was a way of life, it was survival, it was a way to take care of their families. So I wanted to make sure that her voice got out there. I didn't think that it would have went the way it went. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I was truthfully, I was like, oh, okay, so when they were like, oh, Adrian's want to pick up the book, I was elated because, you know, the publisher world is difficult, and you probably speak on it, like, a lot of times they're not going to take a book that's already been pretty much completed. But they took it. And like I always say, spirit, you know, spirit with no spirit. And it was just the right timing. Right. You know, you get, you get placed in people's lives for a reason, and we go for in each other's lives for a reason. And that was one of many, many, many reasons. I know that you could probably share a lot about what you learned in terms of cooking from Miss Emily. Um, one thing I learned was being in her kitchen about the eyeballs in the grits. <laughs> That's not funny, Poochie. That's not funny, Poochie. So, I thought I knew how to make grits. I do not. Does anyone know what I'm talking about with the eyeballs and the grits? You gotta wash the grits and the little eyeballs, as she called them, come to the surface. I'm wondering what you look. <laughs> you know, wow, what I learned from Emily in the kitchen, that's a... Because our conversations just ran so deep. Like, I think what I learned more than anything else, it's just, wow. It's, it's so much I learned from her. And we had so much conversations. Our conversations will go all over the place. Um, I think more what I learned was really deeper than food. It was stay true to yourself. She was very proud of somebody pushing our coach through food. I could be out here doing anything else. I could be cooking in the summer kitchen and ooh, 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 all these accolades. I could be working in some fancy restaurant in the hot time. But I chose to step on my own to be out here to represent us. And she saw that. And she was just proud of that. But I think more than anything, what I took from Emily is just, is just the heart, the spirit. You know, I can't really describe to y'all what I learned from her. Because there's some things that you just around some people that you just gonna get that you just not gonna get, and I can't explain it if I'm not around the person. Why can't you know you gotta be there in the moment? So, but I think more than anything else is just that sense of community. Always know that it's not just about you. It's about what you do for everybody else. Not to be selfish. And. Should I take care of my wife? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, it just, it's just a spirit. It was a uh, I don't really have words to really explain because I can't. I'll be honest. I think you explained it beautifully. <laughs> What's your favorite the cookbook? <laughs> oh, you know, I got the cookbook from last week. Yeah, you know, like, you got the cookbook. I was gonna laugh you have to get the cookbook. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, we, we've cooked together. Um, 
I hop and draw something serious. <laughs> you know, you just pull up to the house and I hop and draw, you know. And I'd be like, I'll tell him, I'm coming over, like, you don't know, gotta worry about cooking nothing. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna put something cool right together real quick. Um, uh, probably fry, uh, fry a piece of fish. Um, but I would say, oh, no, over soup, everything. Over rice. That's one of my favorite things. The over pearl. Over pearl, over shrimp. And her devil crabs. <laughs> she sent me home with some one time. She sent me home with the one time I haven't had the devil crabs. She sent me home with them. And I was like, wow. I said, the best I've had outside of the people in Hill Head Island, these were like the all crab, no filler, hand picked. Um, actually, I think that the same time I sat with her, we were hand picking crabs. That might have been for the same batch, but the devil crabs and the okra rice. Um, but Favorite meal, I mean, it, really is not, not just her, it's, my baby was her. Mm. Who she was. Because it was more than just food, like this would talk. She would drop history. Like the history, like her, her memory was full of gin. She would ask stuff as a kid. I'm telling her, like, I don't remember last week. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah. Um, her, 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 her